Now in the section 2 we have assertion reason type of question. The question is let the vectors P, Q, Q, R, R, S, S, T and T, U and U, P represent the sides of a regular hexagon. So there is a regular hexagon and these are the vectors which represent the sides of that regular hexagon. Now the statement 1 is P, Q vector cross R, S vector plus S, T vector is not equal to 0 because the statement 2 is P Q vector cross R S vector equal to 0 and P Q vector cross S T vector is not equal to 0. Now let us take this be the required regular hexagon. And here we know that this P Q is not parallel to this T R. That is this T R is the resultant of this R S and this S T. So now by using this only we are going to verify the statement 1. So since the vector P Q is not parallel to the vector T R and also since T R is resultant of R S and S T, we can easily say that P Q vector cross this R S vector plus S T vector is not equal to 0 because we already know that whenever two vectors A vector and B vector are parallel then only we can get that A vector cross B vector will be equal to 0. So whenever two vectors are parallel then only their cross product will be 0. But here this P Q and this T R are not at all parallel and at the same time this T R is the resultant of this R S and S T. So hence this T R will be equal to this R S plus S T. So therefore we get P Q vector cross R S vector plus S T vector is not equal to 0. So hence statement 1 is true because this is what given in the statement 1. And now for statement 2 we have P Q vector cross R S vector is equal to 0. But here we know that this is P Q vector and this is R S vector and here by using this diagram we can easily say that this P Q vector is not parallel to this R S vector. So since P Q vector is not parallel to R S vector then their cross product will not equal to 0. So hence we get P Q vector cross R S vector is not equal to 0. This means what? This means statement 2 is false because in the statement 2 we have P Q vector cross R S vector is equal to 0. But here this is not equal to 0 hence statement 2 is false. Hence out of these 4 options option C is the correct answer that is statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. And now we have the 11th equation. Here the question is let f of x be an indefinite integral of sin square x. Statement 1 is the function f of x satisfies f of x plus pi equal to f of x for all real x. Because the statement 2 here is sin square x plus pi is equal to sin square x for all real x. Here listen, first we are going to check this statement too. Here we have sin square x plus pi is equal to sin square x for all real x. We already know that sin pi plus theta will be equal to minus sin theta. So now we have sin square x plus pi and this can be written as what? This can be written as sin square pi plus x and this will be equal to what? Here this will be equal to minus sin x into minus sin x because the sin square pi plus x will be equal to what this will be equal to sin pi plus x into sin pi plus x and sin pi plus x will be equal to minus sin x and again sin pi plus x will be equal to minus